All right, so I figured we could go ahead and knock out the last question in this section 2.4. That way I can get started on linear drag force. Okay, so the origin of the quadratic drag force for any projectile in a fluid is the inertia of the fluid that the projectile sweeps up. Uh, we'll just start with part A. Assume the projectile has a cross-sectional area A, normal to the velocity, and speed V, and the density of the fluid show that the rate which the projectile encounters the fluid is uh, QAV. Well, we'll start with this. The distance traveled is the speed per this section of time. And our volume, so we'll call D volume, will be this area times the section being sweeped out. So we can say D volume is A, V, D. So it's the cross-sectional area times the, the bit being sweeped out here. Okay, so we have that. And now we need to look at the mass. Now the mass is going to be your area times, or I'm sorry, it's going to be your volume times your density, which they give us. Well, the dV is just AVD. So dM is really just this times dV, which was a v dt. So dm by dt is this stuff divided by dt, which is uh, v dt. So your this all drops. Uh, I'm sorry, dt. I'm sorry, um, dt, yeah, didn't mean to drop that. There shouldn't be a v here. Oops. So we did dm, which is all that, times just dt. There's nothing to replace there with. So dm by dt is just all this stuff. Which, oops, that's part B. Part A, QAV. Okay. Now we need to do part B which it says simplify, simplifying assumptions that all fluid is accelerated to the speed V of the projectile so that the net drag force of the projectile is QAV squared. Okay, well, the big thing to know is that our force is equal to our change in momentum. Now, dP dt is going to be the change in our mass over time times velocity, right? Well, the MBT we just, we just found, DMDT. So we just substitute what we got before, times V. And we find that your change in momentum, which is gonna be equal to our force, in this case, it's the quadratic air resistance is just that, which is what they had for B right here. Now for part C, it says show that what we have in 2.84 reduces to 2.3, and 2.3 is that F quad is equal to CV squared. Okay, so they gave us this bit in the question.
They gave us that bit. And what do we know? Well, we know the area is going to be pi times d squared over 2 squared, or 4. And we can substitute that into here. So that simplifies it a little bit. So let's write all this out. Times pi d squared v squared all over 4. Or I'm just going to rewrite it a little bit. Oops. Now, this looks pretty familiar because the other thing from 2.3 is that um, I think I have it in my book here, actually. Let me look at the notes. That way I don't write it down wrong. But the other thing that they mentioned in 2.4, which I think should be noted, is that C equals lambda D squared. Okay, so another way to think of f quad is lambda d squared v squared if we just substitute this into c. Well, if you look at what we have now, we have d squared v squared, so this part is lambda. Okay, so if lambda equals all this, we can substitute the values they gave us into here to confirm what they gave us for lambda. So let's see, what did they give us? If you go up here, I'm pretty sure they gave us everything we need. Okay, we have k being 1 fourth. We have our density. Yeah, we have everything. So let's see, this is uh, 1.29 kilograms per meters cubed times pi all over 16, which if you plug that in, you should get about 0 0.25 newtons times second squared over meters to the fourth. And there we go. We confirmed that value. We saw that it reduces. And we verified the value for 